And I think a lot of it also stems from because I was like bullied. And when I did start sports, I was literally, I was last, I was last place in running. So it's like, I felt like I had to prove everyone. And I felt like I had to play catch up for a while before Mm -hmm. I started annihilating at everyone, everyone. Like Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm not going to be dead last forever. Like it's going to change. And it took years of training, but it was Mm -hmm. like, four or five years. I was very young. I was very young. So Mm -hmm. that's all I had to focus on was, was like, you know, training and sports and stuff. But that's kind of why that's never gone away is because I was always the kid that was a little bit undersized, not, not super big, not super small, but you know, very fast, but you know, I was muscle bound, but I still didn't feel like I was at where I wanted to be. So I always yeah. felt like I was lagging behind and I hated that feeling of like feeling like mm-hmm. I'm like behind and everyone's like light years ahead of me. That's all it took for just to like the fire to just be ignited and for me to want to, it just drove me to just punish myself in training. Yeah. And in some ways I hear that that drive was beneficial, right? At a certain point in your life, it helped you go, I can get better and I'm willing to do the work to get better. It's really like a classic example of an expired mindset, but then you get to a point in life where you have to go, I can't keep that same thought process process in mind. This is no longer a strength. Like people want to spend time with me and I want to spend two and a half hours a day. I'm exaggerating, you know, doing a routine. And then it's no longer needed as a skill, you know, to that degree. So finding balance. Absolutely. And like with your background as well, helping people again, shift their mindset, mindfulness, meditation, kind of the spiritual Mm -hmm. side of things. What are, what maybe let, you know, since the last time we chatted, what are some things that have kind of shifted for maybe some of your patients, your clients um, of things, maybe break breakthroughs on things that they've, let's say, struggled with in the past, but they just, they just did a few tweaks to their routine Mm -hmm. or added something in or, or removed something that wasn't serving them. And then they're like, boom, aha. Yeah. Probably one of the biggest shifts that I've seen across quite a few clients, whether that's one-on-one or even like in organizations, is their willingness to give themselves more what we call cognitive flexibility and really recognizing that there is a lot of security in a routine. 